Submerged by the suburbs of Wellington in Shropshire, you can hardly dream of what wonders are behind this hedge. Walk past the lodge and you are plunged into the past. A long and sombre avenue of Wellingtonias leads you up to the lost world of the gentleman's villa residence. There were once tens of thousands of such establishments as this, miniature suburban estates that were built to imitate the stately homes of England by the big noise businessmen and merchants of the late 19th century. Now Sunnycroft is the last to survive, with all its architecture, art and appurtenances intact. Sunnycroft was in the Lander family for four generations until Joan Lander died last year and left it to the National Trust. To step inside Sunnycroft is to step inside a scaled down stately. The echoes are positively deafening. Magnificence in miniature with knobs on, with the baronial bulging forth in Jacobean forms. With its wealth of woodwork and its profusion of grandfather clocks and the lordly monarch of the glen, the visitor's first impression of Sunnycroft would be deemed most satisfactory. The drawing room, or rather the ladies' room, as this was oft times called, was where the ladies would enjoy Thursday socials, sipping tea through this local mint and china. Joan Lander was a needlewoman of repute, and indeed on the mantelpiece in here, Sunnycroft has been embroidered both literally and metaphorically as a country estate. She also wrote a diary as gently evocative picture of the period as you could imagine, with such enchanting entries as this. Finished my farewell jumper. It looks a little pulled in places, but not so bad considering. Sadly, so many houses open to the public today have been emptied of all life beneath the surface. When the drawers of a house are full, so too is its heart. And just look at the glories to be found here. Progressive Treasure Hunt. This book provides every detail for host or hostess, eliminating any possible anxiety. And here is the Allies flag puzzle with the Allies' flags, with Germany in the middle. Mm -hmm. This is a superb example of the turn-of-the-century dream of fine living in the suburbs. Here the gentlemen would quaff away at their port, puffing away at their cigars around this magnificent table. And their school board, too, is no mean affair. To sail up the staircase to the balustraded galleries, to sail through the upper echelons of swell suburbia. The family portraits proudly proclaim their solid state in society. <gasps> Here's a very, very beautiful Gothic library chair, complete with tapestried steps. But where is the library? Well, I fear there is not one. And indeed, the infantry of Sunnycroft did reveal the house not to be overburdened with books. <laughs> that reminds me of an excellent 19th century joke in Punch about a businessman and books. And when asked if he would like a book for Christmas, he replied, no, thank you, I've got one already. <laughs> Beating everything into a cocked hat for me at Sunnycroft is the medicine cupboard. Look at its glories. The smell alone has pure, potent power. 
Oh, a deep inhalation and you're imbued with a living sense of the past. I find this draw liner on the top. Montgomery, on to Tunis! April 11th, 1943. And look at all these bottles, dating from the turn of the century. What's down here? <gasps> Something extremely alarming. It's a plaid cut from the locks of one of the landers. <laughs> and then there's this elegant box, a glycerin syringe to relieve constipation. And then, ha-ha, this is what I've always wanted to try. The terrifying power of spirit of sal volatile. On down to the servants' quarters. There were two of them living at Sunnycroft. The back stairs lead to the nether regions of the house, where the kitchen is largely unchanged since the 1930s. In the kitchen, wonder of wonders, there is a bucket of eggs that dates from the war. They are preserved in Isinglass which, if you please, is the bladder of a sturgeon, which will keep them indefinitely. At Sunnycroft, self-sufficiency and thrift were the governing forces of life. Its five-acre estate produced a rich yield of meat, milk and cheese, as well as fruit, eggs and vegetables. The former gardener, Joseph Tudor, took me to feed the chickens. I used to have a Jersey herd of cattle. Good Lord, how many cattle? About 60 years to keep on an average. And I say for you to self-sufficient with bacon, pigs, and she always kept a large number of hens. How many? Well, there used to be three big fields up in the pier. Good Lord. The grandfather lived there before Miss, Miss Lander and her father moved in. Yeah. Did he live and, in Splendour? Uh, oh, yes. Everything was perfect in those days. Was he a delightful man? No, he was, <laughs> he, was, he was a very stern man. And he didn't like anybody coming near the estate, not unless you knew him. Go on in, chicks! Just shake go on it in, in chicks. there, come for it. Go on in, chicks! There we go. Chicka, chick, chick, chicks! <laughs> <laughs> so, let, I want to hear more, and more, and more, and more, and more. <laughs> Sunnycroft is the model gentleman suburban estate, complete with stables. Look at that comfortably framed bicycle hanging on the wall. Wow! A great Daimler. With a brute of a body. And a lush, plush interior. Exciting. It's hurrah and huzzah for Jane Lander and the National Trust for seeing that such a soothing element of our past as Sunnycroft should be saved. It is the survival of the unremarkable that is so remarkable about the place. <laughs> Future generations can be assured of seeing a particular slice of life that was once the backbone of Britain. So it's forward into a rosy future for Sunnycroft. <laughs>